So you don't have to be Jewish to love Jewish rye bread or Jewish comedy. Jewish comics, writers, and Jewish humor have had a popular impact on American culture, and it would be hard to understand comedy in general without knowing Jewish comedy. Little Jewish man gets hit by a car. They're waiting for the ambulance. The cop takes his jacket off, covers him. He says, you're comfortable? Say, I make a nice living. <laughs> now a pretty, pretty, pretty good Larry David fans. Analysis of Jewish humor, its nature, its development, and its vital role throughout Jewish history is explored in a book titled Jewish Comedy, A Serious History. Serious? Well, don't worry. There are plenty of jokes in the book to illustrate the rich tradition of Jewish humor that has become a laugh track through the ages and across America. Joining us now to help us understand how humor has sustained the people even through the harshest of times is Jeremy Dauber, the Atran Professor of Yiddish Language, Literature, and Culture at Columbia University. Jeremy, nice to have you here with us. It's a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So let's, let's start off so that folks understand. We say Jewish comedy, a serious history. Explain serious because it's also very funny. Well, thanks for saying that, first of all. I mean, that's really nice to hear. I mean, I tried to take this very long uh, history of Jewish comedy, which I thought said something about the history of the Jews. It was really a way in thinking about uh, how Jewish culture and literature flourished through the ages and affected people all over America, but to tell it in a kind of entertaining way as well. Uh, and that was my goal in sort of writing the book, is to take all of these wonderful uh, comics and creators that people have loved and to uh, put them into a longer tradition and an entertaining narrative. And I'm glad to hear you felt like it worked. And it really is, it's a work of history. So, so you, you start literally, in, in the earliest days, and, and describe how humor was woven throughout the Jewish people and the Jewish culture and the Jewish, the Jewish history. Start, start from some of the beginnings for us. Sure. I mean, one of the things that I think was the most surprising for people to hear about is that Jewish comedy goes all the way back. It's not just an American phenomenon. Right? Well, it goes all the way back even to the Bible. And that is a particular surprise to people because they say, well, the Bible's not funny. This is not something yeah. we think of as a funny thing. And I think that the Bible is one of the greatest books ever, and it has all of humanity and all of the human condition, including comedy, um, but in a lot of surprising ways. Some of them are about saying, we know that human beings are comic. We know that they, they think they know how the world works and they laugh about it, but the truth is that they don't because God knows better, right? That's one thing, right? right? But other things are also sort of saying, well, there's a kind of nervous and anxious comedy about Jewish people have been told by God they're the chosen people, but history doesn't always seem to prove it that way, uh, or it doesn't seem to indicate right. the evidence of that. And that tension is also present as early back as the Bible itself. When you talk about defining this, yeah. and, and you know, we, we all know generally about comedy, but how do you define Jewish comedy? It's a great question, and it was one of the things that was the most important thing to figure out as I started writing the book, because I said, you know, if Mr. Schwartz or Mr. Goldstein writes a knock-knock joke, you know, is that Jewish comedy? And I said, you know, that would be much too broad for me. So let's try and focus first on stuff that has something significant to say about Jewish history or the Jewish condition or Jewish life or Jewish theology. Um, and that it had to be produced by someone who identified themselves uh, as Jewish. So even though, for example, Charlie Chaplin was someone who many people thought was Jewish, um, his comedy, as magnificent as it is, wouldn't have made it into the book. Okay. You, you do talk about uh, the, the passage of time in different periods. And you do mention, and you, you sort of touched base on it a moment ago, you, you, you mentioned the, you know, the, the trials and the tribulations and the travails of the Jewish people and how, how humor became a, a means of dealing with that. I think that's right. You know, one of the most important strands of Jewish comedy, and one of the things I do in the book is talk about a number of different kinds of Jewish comedy, strands of them, um, is the fact that some parts of Jewish comedy, some significant parts, are a result uh, and a response to persecution uh, and, and a history of anti-Semitism. And a lot of that kind of Jewish comedy develops and says, in the words of that noted scholar Mel Brooks, you know, if they're laughing, how can they bludgeon you to death? Uh, and that's a way of sort of dealing with some of this, sort of dealing with accommodating to the situation. Right. There are other kinds of comedy in that vein that are aggressive, and they say sometimes they're written in languages that 
the hostile people won't understand, but saying, we're trying to get back through our comedy because we can't get back in any other way. Yeah. Um, and then there are other concerns as the history goes that maybe this kind of accommodation or this kind of uh, aggression without meaning, you know, might not be the best way of solving uh, the Jewish condition, right? If, if there is a way of solving that um, uh, with response to anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes part of the story as well. Yeah. And, and you talk about the various, the various personalities, the various characters. Yeah. And certainly, you know, in our era, you, you mentioned, you know, Mel Brooks. Yeah. You know, I have one of my favorite things, Mel Brooks, Carl <laughs> Reiner, you know. Amazing the, talents. You know, great, just, great just wonderful stuff. Yeah. Um, and you, you sort of trace it and you get us to Jerry Seinfeld. Talk about the differences, if you will, or the evolution. Maybe that's yeah. a better word. Yeah. Well, I think one of the, the interesting and most interesting aspects about the evolution of American Jewish comedy um, is the way that many of its protagonists start out in, in communities and in settings that are entirely Jewish. Um, our first uh, comedians in, uh, in the great wave of Eastern European Jewish immigration to the United States at the beginning of the 20th century they're operating in Yiddish. They're writing in, they're writing in the Yiddish language. They're writing, obviously, for only a Jewish audience that can understand Yiddish. Uh, and they can rely on certain kinds of assumptions and commonalities about their way of life. And though, that's what the funniness comes from, a kind of proximity. And then, as the story develops, you have people like Sid Caesar and Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks, and they're working in these new media that are mass media. And maybe they've cut their teeth in a place like the Borscht Belt, which is primarily a Jewish audience, but they're working in English now for a, for a much more general audience. And they're trying to maintain a kind of sensibility that they have that, that keeps them different, but for a world that they love that is just much broader. And then ultimately we get to people like perhaps Jerry Seinfeld and even sort of Judd Apatow or his successors that are in a world where they say, look, we have been welcomed into the American community. We feel very comfortable here. We are not necessarily that different from any other people. And yet somehow we still feel that our Jewishness matters to ourselves in our comedy. Yeah. And uh, how, how, does, how do we tell that story in our comedy? And, and, I, I, I've, and I think it's fascinating that they have held on to that. Yeah. You yeah. know, it might not be the single driving force in their humor, but they're still at, at the core I, of, of their stories and their comedy. I think that's a great point. I mean, you know, take someone like Adam Sandler in the 1990s. Certainly, you know, one wouldn't describe Adam Sandler primarily as having Jewishness in his comedy, but right. one of his most resonant uh, uh, bits for him and for others was this Hanukkah song, right. which basically was like, here's this list of people who are Jewish. David Lee Roth. <laughs> Lights the menorah, so do Kirk Douglas, James Kahn, and the late Dinah Shura. And basically, that's all we need to know about them for our song, that's is right. that they're Jewish. And it fits in our song, and, and it, it makes it funny. And it makes it funny. Yep. And, you know, thinking about why that touched a chord with so many people, including Sandler himself, you know, I think is a really interesting question for where this Jewish comedy is evolving to, like you're talking about. Well, it, it's a marvelous book. Oh. Jewish comedy, a serious history. Um, it's, that, it's a great combination of being informative and entertaining at the same time. So I, 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 it's, it's a lovely read for anybody. Thank you so much. So it, it's a pleasure, Jeremy. Thanks for spending some time with a, us. A real Great pleasure work. to be here. Thank you very much for having me. You'll be well. Thank you.